You're watching Vancouver TV, where we show you what's happening in your city. We've got the latest movie reviews and access to your favorite celebs. From fashion to red carpets, live shows, and more, we cover it all, keeping you informed about your city and in the know about upcoming events. We have had peace in these lands for many years now. But one of our villages burned tonight. War is coming. An invasion. If we do not unite to fight this enemy, our world will perish. <laughs> Saving the world is not a one-man job. We fight together or we die together. You don't have me to protect you. I need no one to protect me. Well then. They're stronger. Be smarter. This war will destroy us all. But together, we might stand a chance. Whatever you plan to do, do it now! Welcome to Vancouver Television. I'm your host, Maria Rincon. Today we're in Gastown and about to meet Mello, a singer-songwriter from here in Vancouver who just released her latest EP in April of 2016. Let's go learn more about her. Hey guys, we're here with Mello, singer-songwriter here in Vancouver. How are you doing today? Great! I'm really excited to have you. Congratulations on your latest EP release in April. So, um, you weren't born here in Vancouver. Tell us, um, where did you grow up? So, I grew up in Xiamen, China. It's in uh, Fujian province. Then I came here when I was in grade 8. Awesome! And then you went to school here. Are you still in school right now? Yeah, I went to Churchill and then now I'm currently in UBC, studying UBC. Yeah, and what are you studying? Econ. Wow, you're econ and then you're a singer as well? Totally don't match, right? <laughs> yeah, um, so yeah, I'm just doing a lot of music uh, in my free time. And then currently very busy with school and um, constantly dropping a lot of new music. Wow, super woman. <laughs> <laughs> Like I care. started into music and singing? Um, I started to learn uh, how to play the piano when I was in when I was five and then after that I just keep playing piano and then sometimes I write a little bit of like the flow and melody and then uh, when I was in grade five I remember I finished one of my first song like Mandarin pop song and then after that, I just uh, keep writing like melody and then um, writing some pop songs. Yeah. Wow, awesome. Been a while since we talked. Got a one that I love. Always think to love. I decided to do three different languages because um, I have 
my Mandarin background. And then when I moved to Vancouver, I met a lot of um, Korean friends and I'm really into Korean culture as well. So I decided to do um, one English, one Mandarin and one Korean song. Because Vancouver is a very like multicultural place and then I believe that this EP represents myself as a you know, very international, like multicultural person. <laughs> So you're an R&B singer that sings in three different languages. I think that's amazing. Who do you draw your influence from? Um, when I was a child, I listened. I grew up with Jay Chow's music. He's a very, very great um, Chinese um, pop singer and composer and producer as well. So I drew a lot of my um, piano influence from him because I'm a very piano-based composer, songwriter. And then um, when I moved to Vancouver, I started to listen to a lot of um, R&B and hip hop songs. I really like Beyonce and Drake, and also a lot of um, Korean artists as well. Yeah. So in my Korean song self, um, a lot of audience can feel that I drew a lot of like the reason K-pop R&B influence. <laughs> So you write all your own songs. How do you get into the songwriting process? Um, so I usually just sit in front of my keyboard and then record uh, random melodies that came up into in my head. And then after that, I started to use my program. So right now I'm using uh, Logic Pro as a program for making all the beats, all the melody. And then usually, like I got a lot of inspiration like during like midnight time and sometimes when I when I go shower and now there's like a melody in my head so I need to run out and grab my recording like grab my phone just like sing it like random stuff and then every time I like went over and checked the melody it's really hilarious it's random moments of random. like genius and um, you know pop songs are all about love what do you like to write about um for those three songs, it's all about love. And then um, for me, I guess I would write most of my songs talking about love. But in the future, I'm really looking forward to write more, um, pos probably gonna be very positive stuff because I feel like I wanna use music as a, um, like not as like a product for like commercial, but I really wanna show people how like my attitude towards life and then it, like in a lot of positive ways. Besides singing, I just started my own record label called MMP Entertainment. In, it's based in Vancouver. And right now um, I signed one of the artists called Eden and then he's from Korea. He's a great, great rapper. Right now we are doing a lot, a lot of music productions uh, with local artists and we're looking forward to invite more and more artists to join our label. Is it true that you never regret? When we met, you say you think I'm not the same. But now you step with no Tell us, what are you looking forward to in the future as a singer and a songwriter and now a producer yourself? Mm -hmm. So um, for MMP and then for myself, we will be constantly dropping a lot of singles like every month. And then in the end of the year, we are anticipating to host a MMP concert in Vancouver and also maybe one in Asia. And uh, we're still deciding on where we're going to go. Depends on how enthusiastic our fan is. How do you like to shoot your music videos? Do you have any specific visions for them or do you just like to um, play like love stories on them? Mm. So I shoot two of my music videos um, in Vancouver. So the No One Like You and Self is both shoot in Vancouver. In the future, I'm more looking forward to shoot a music video that can take place maybe in the States, maybe in like Caribbean countries, maybe like just a few of them and then having 
um, different kind of presentations to the audience. But I always want to shoot uh, most of my music video in Vancouver because Vancouver is a really, really beautiful place and has a lot of great locations for footage for the artists to explore. And then in terms of the content, um, for me, since um, I'm looking for uh, making a more like artistic type of, type of um, music video for my following uh, R&B songs. And then for Eden, I believe that we will come up with a lot of um, like interesting and unique ideas for the music video. Yeah. Yeah. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're not in school and not writing music, what hobbies do you like to participate in? I love snowboarding. Yeah, that's what a lot of my friends were kind of surprised because um, they think that like for me, I seem like more of a girl that I would like just stay home and then maybe go shopping. Somewhere. Yeah, a girly girl. Yeah, girly girl. But like, yeah, I do love snowboarding. So yeah, like that's pretty much what I do every winter. Like I go snowboarding every day when I have a break. And I, what else is my... Oh, I love cars. Yeah, it's very it's very interesting how like um, like Vancouver has such a great car culture. There's a lot of um, like people who are very into cars. And then I started getting into cars when I was a kid because um, my family um, is doing like car related business, so I got very interested in it. And then when I came to Canada, I started working at a car dealership when I was in when I was 19. And then I got very, very interested in cars. And then I always hang out with my friends, girlfriend, guy friends, and talking about cars, meeting a lot of great people, car, car people in Vancouver. Car enthusiasts, that's so cool. I didn't expect that from you at all. Um, this might be a difficult question, but what's your favorite car at the moment? My favorite car, um, it's hard to say, but um, my favorite car would be probably Super Trofeo. So it's a Lamborghini, like a limited edition Lamborghini. I always wanted to have that. In what color? In red. <laughs> it has to be in red. Yeah. 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 And uh, talking back about uh, traveling, um, where have you been to lately or what's your next travel plan like? I've been to like many, many places in almost like all the continents that I can go. Probably my next travel destination would be, I want to go Africa. And then I want to go to a lot of countries in Europe as well. Yeah, explore around. And you know, traveling is a great way to like experience everything, open up your eyes. Do you think you use those experiences to write your music at all? Yeah, absolutely. Because I believe in everywhere that I go and then everything I see, it's always going to be, it's always going to draw inspiration upon me, for sure. Yeah. So already being so successful, um, what advice do you have for up and coming young artists? Um, for young artists who has the dream and doing music and becoming like a great artist for people who like appreciate their music, I believe that in the beginning it's always going to be really really hard because um, for me when I started doing music a lot of my like friends or people who always tell me like oh it's going to be a very very tough like tough road and then you're gonna go through a lot of things and maybe in the end you probably cannot achieve what you expected to achieve and then all your hard work is probably not gonna be paid off in the end but I feel like for me doing music and then doing whatever I would like to do it's really really important to me because um, no matter what in the end of the day if people really like your stuff or not but you would feel the like achieved the you would really appreciate the achievement kind of feeling in the end because you've spent all your effort and then I believe that one day you're gonna find a someone who really appreciates your music your style everything so I would like to tell everyone out there that who want to do like music or becoming an artist to never give up on what they really love to do and don't let people to change what you like
Facebook and YouTube, SoundCloud, Instagram, and Weibo, so all these social media platforms. How do you think being an artist in the 21st century with all this technology helps your success? I believe social media is the key in um, today's like promotion and the marketing and everything. And also, it's such a great way for like the artists to kind of show, like, um, to keep their fans updated and also to show people like what kind of um, path they're going through and then what kind of music they're gonna be doing. And then I believe social media is probably the most important thing to focus on for all the art artists these days yeah and also i'm i really appreciate everyone that um follow me on these social media platforms and also they gave me so much support like sometimes when i'm not sure yeah whether i should keep doing these kind of music or like keep doing some um like entertainment related stuff or not and then all my followers fans they always give me the motivation to keep yeah to keep doing and then always make me feel so loved yeah so what are some of the challenges you face as an artist um when i started doing the music and then when i decided to release the album I was having such a hard time to um, keep on track and then make everything happen on the right time that I scheduled. Because um, in the beginning, I was doing everything by myself, like writing songs, producing, and then I have to make sure, even for the music video, I have to scout the locations, I have to make sure that everyone's on set on time and everything. But afterwards, when I when people started seeing me doing music, and then when my friends are like, oh, they they're really supportive and a lot of friends becoming um, a part of my team so right now everything is getting way better so like, I have a lot of people helping me with my MMP uh, with my music as well so in the end everything is I believe everything is gonna be great I'm Mello for Vancouver Television. Thank you for watching. Hola, VTV viewers. It's Christine White, your host of Vancouver Television and your reigning Miss Vancouver 2015-2016. I'm here at the starting line for Run H2O Guatemala. This event is to help communities in Guatemala setting up water stations and water facilities to help their communities. Let's go check out this event. This is the fourth uh, Run for H2O event at Riverfront Park. Uh, this is the second time I've been involved and it's to raise clean water for Guatemalan families. Right now there's about a million Guatemalan families that do not have access to clean water. So this event is to help fundraise the money uh, with, with all the help here that we have from volunteers, from runners, from, dona from donations so that we can provide those provide those families clean access to water. This year so far we have raised over $62,000 which is amazing because our original goal was $60,000 and uh, that is to fund two water projects in Guatemala, one for Rihuyup and one for Sakchil. So very happy that we were able to hit that mark. with Melissa, one of the directors of this event. How are you? I'm great. A little tired, but... <laughs> yeah, I know you've been here in the very early morning setting up. Can you tell us a bit about it? Sure, yeah, we got here at 6 um, and basically put up all the tents um, for the event. Um, and then, yeah, we started it right at 9. So it's been a fun morning and lots, lots to do. Yeah, exciting. Can you tell us about the event and sure. your goals? Sure. So this event is called Run for H2O. Um, it's the fourth annual event, um, so it's been going on yeah, since 2012. Um, all the funds raised are for Hope International and they partner with um, a local organization in Guatemala. 
And so it's a particular province called Quiche, and there's thousands of villages and communities right now that are still um, waiting for clean water. And so we got to go to Guatemala last year, some people went this year, um, to see some of the communities that benefited from the clean water from previous runs, uh, and including this year's uh, run as well, um, that will be getting clean water. And so it's just really exciting seeing in action um, the process of being built. Uh, they come from like spring cappings and then are gravity fed tubes right down to each individual home. That's amazing. Have you been to Guatemala? Yes. So I went last year um, with the team. That was the first year we ever did a trip and they went again this year. Awesome. Thank you so much, Melissa. We'll see you again next year. Okay, thanks. See you. The run just concluded, and beside me here is Steve, who just completed the 10-kilometer run. How are you, Steve? I'm good, thank you. How was the run? Awesome. I feel uh, really uh, peaceful and lovely. And peaceful? Man, I would feel really tired after 10 kilometers. <laughs> good on you. So could you tell us a little bit about the route and what you saw along the route? Oh, I saw so many uh, people running and have fun and enjoying this activity for help people to have uh, water in Guatemala. So it's my first time coming here and I uh, really appreciate and uh, uh, people there are, have fun and uh, it's really nice to be here and uh, enjoying. Awesome, we saw you running. You were quite quick. So what time did you actually finish? What time did you cross the finish line? Uh, I, my time is 45 minutes. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Steve. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks. If you want to find more information about the run, if you want to be involved, I implore you to check out runforh2o.ca. That's www.runforh2o.ca. That's where all the information about the run, about how you can fundraise, and how you can be involved as a volunteer, all that information is on there. So if you have any questions, feel free to contact us through there as well. We'd be more than happy to have you. Hey VTV viewers, it's Christine White here, your reigning Miss Vancouver 2015 and your host of Vancouver Television. We're here to support Philippine Independence Day and I'm here right beside my fellow Ride to Conquer Cancer cyclist. How are you everyone? We're good, thank you. Thanks for supporting the ride. So how many rides have you been on? I've been uh, riding uh, the Ride to Conquer Cancer three times now. This is your third year? This is my third year. Awesome, so the Ride to Conquer Cancer is 240 kilometers from Vancouver to Seattle, is that right? Yes. Pretty much. That's amazing. So could you tell us about your team and your teammates? Yeah, our uh, team is Manibela Cycling Team and we're doing the Ride to Conquer Cancer. Cool. So do you ride in memory of someone or is you just fighting for this cause? Exactly. We, we, so each of us have has lost someone and so we're riding in honor of them. That can be much appreciated because my sister also battled cancer and she passed away in 2002 so kudos to all of you for what you're doing and I really respect what you're doing. Could you tell us a little bit about the ride? Well the ride is um, it's about a 200 kilometer ride to come to uh, Seattle from Vancouver to Seattle and it spans for two days and um, all the funds all the funds that we uh, that we get goes directly to the, to the foundation. Every single penny goes to the foundation nothing goes to administrative, administrative work. And yeah, well, hopefully we'll get more members to join and ride with us. It's my seventh year, and it's been fantastic. It's a fantastic experience for all of us. Awesome. Thank you so much. So thank you so much. I'm going to see you in August. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Hey everyone, so I'm here with Rich, who is the host of today's event. How are you? I'm great. How are you, Christine? Very good. So Rich, can you tell us what's going on? Well, today is a special event for us Filipinos. This month, June, is Philippine Independence Month. We're in, we celebrate our being Filipino, of course. And today is Pista ng Bayan, as you can see. It's a different location than before. It's much bigger and lots of booths. Thank you for those uh, the sponsors. So just an amazing day to celebrate our culture, our traditions, our language, food of course, and just being as Filipinos. That's awesome. So we're going to go check it out. And uh, could you tell us a little bit about what you're doing? Well, today, I, we're doing right now, I basically, I, I, I host a lot of events for the Filipino community because I love the Filipino community. Um, if you're not here today, actually uh, on June 11th, there's going to be a gala. We're inviting everybody to go there as well because it's going to be, we're, all of us will be wearing uh, barong 
and Filipiniana and Terno. So it's going to be an amazing day to showcase us being Filipino. I'm proud. Proud Pinoy. Pinoy pride. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Rick. <laughs> Thank you, Christine. Thank you. It's nice to bump into you again. Could you tell us a little bit about your role? Uh, well, uh, today we are uh, ho uh, holding a, we call it a Pista ng Bayan. So it's a Filipino fiesta in celebration of the 118th anniversary of the proclamation of Philippine independence. Well, at the same time, this year, um, we are celebrating the 60th anniversary of the establishment of the Philippine Consulate General in Vancouver. So the event today is organized by the UFC ABC in cooperation with the Philippine Consulate General in Vancouver. That's amazing. 60 years. That's correct, yes. The Philippine Consulate in Vancouver is the very first Philippine Foreign Service uh, establishment uh, in Canada. So before the embassy in Ottawa was established, and that was in 1971, the consulate was the one performing both diplomatic and consular functions for the whole of Canada for uh, 60 years right now, uninterrupted service. Wow, that's really, really amazing. lovely lady standing beside you. Who is this? Yeah, my wife Miriam. Of course, my, 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 whole, my whole family is with me today and of course the, the Philippine Consulate uh, Office are here to support the event. Yeah. Awesome. So does he do a good job? Yeah, very much. Yes, That's good. So Mabuhay, thank you very much. What a successful event and what an exciting event this was. Thank you everyone for tuning in to Vancouver Television. Happy Philippine Independence Day.